What's up, everybody? This is Pastor Regina here, and I just finished preaching a dynamic message called, If You Are Born Again, It's Time to Produce Some Evidence. So as a Christian, there should be evidence that you are a believer in God. I, I like this saying right here. If they put you on trial for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? What is this evidence I'm talking about? Is I'm talking about the word of God. Are you producing enough evidence of the word of God in your life as a Christian? Come on, the word will work if we work it. And so I need you to go to our YouTube live video and watch the message from today. It's called, If You Are Born Again, it's time to produce some evidence. All right. So I want to also invite you guys to come and worship with us on Sunday mornings. Our worship time is 10 o'clock a.m. Our loca location is 120 K Drive. We are in Easley, South Carolina. Don't let the Easley part uh, 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 make you afraid to come. It's not that far in Easley. But I want to invite you to come and worship with us. We have an awesome praise team. We have the greatest uh, CTEs. That's what we call our volunteers because our volunteers are committed to excellence. That's what CTE stands for. And so we can't wait to see you uh, come and visit with us and come and worship with us on Sunday morning. I want to pray that you guys have an awesome, awesome week this week. I pray that God uh, bless your socks off this week. And I thank God that there is no weapon formed against the people of God that shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Again, we can't wait to see you here at Diverse Church. Hallelujah. Some of y'all just need to seek him. Some of y'all just need to seek him. It's not that you're not hearing. You're not seeking him. Woo! That's why I trust. Woo! And he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord. And he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord. And he heard. in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Woo, I'm so glad we serve a God that will never fail us. Even when we are faithless to him, he is always faithful to us. He'll never fail you. I don't care what the enemy is trying to tell you. I don't care what type, what picture the enemy is trying to paint. God will never fail you. Come on, he said in his word, he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. And he will be with us to the end. Some trust in horses. But I trust in the name of the Lord. My God, it's a name that has never allowed me to go down. Come on, that's something to give God praise about. One thing for sure, I might not be able to, to uh, I might not be able to depend on people, but I can always depend on my God. Because he's never let me down. He's never failed me. He's never lost not one of my battles that I had to face. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise this morning. We give you glory this morning. We come this morning to honor you today, God, for who you are, God. You are big God. We serve a big God. We serve a mighty God. Come on, we serve an awesome God. And for that, Lord, we're thankful and we're grateful to you. Now, Father, I ask you to think through 
my mind and speak through my vocal cords today, God. None of me, Lord, but let all of you come forth today. God, I decrease and I ask for you to increase in me, God. Let your word fall on good ground, God. Let your word fall on good ground on, on the hearts of the people today, God. Let this not be a message, God, but let this be uh, a proclamation today, God. Lord, that and let this be a word that when they leave here today, God, it's got them thinking. It's got them thinking, God. Let them apply it to their life this week, God. Because I don't want to get up here and just try to preach something pretty. I want to uh, talk to the people of God and empower your people this morning, Father. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus. And let the saints of God say amen if you agree with that prayer this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So I'm just going to jump right into this. What is the time? I got 10, 5 minutes till. Okay, I won't be that long. But I just want to go ahead and jump right into the message this morning. Um, the title is this. If you are born again, it's time to produce some evidence. We talk about being born again all the time. We talk about being saved. But is there enough evidence if you're around some people and, and I'm not talking about a whole lot of lip service, you know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about you got to go around and tell people I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. If you really saved folk going to know you saved by just being around you. But when we, when we were at the place yesterday and we were doing all of the, uh, decorations and everything before my mom before my mom got there and the girl that was at the facility she was I started talking to her about my mom and she said it's so good that y'all are honoring your mother like this I said well that's what we do we honor our mom I don't know about nobody else but I honor my mama and so I started telling her about my mama and she said, uh, your mama seemed like a very sweet lady. I said, she is a very sweet lady. And the girl looked at me and she said, there's something about you. I don't know your mama, but I, I, it's something about you that telling me you just like your mama. You got a sweet spirit, just like you said your mama got a sweet spirit. I ain't told that lady nothing about me. I don't have to. Why? Because there's an, I'm producing enough evidence that when I walk in the room, people know who I am without me having to shout out, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. So if you're born again, it's time to produce some evidence. So what does it mean to be born again? Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Nicodemus uh, was curious about this born again experience. And he came to Jesus by night with some questions. So let's go to uh, John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. And there was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. So you got to realize this, that the Pharisees were teachers of the law. Um, they, they thought that they had the law perfected. And so they thought that you could be right with God by keeping the law. So because they thought they had the law perfected, they thought they were okay with Jesus. Verse number two, and this man came to Jesus and said by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God and no one can do the signs that you do unless God be with him. You can keep playing, Michael. Verse 3 says this, and Jesus answered him and said, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Somebody say the kingdom of God. So Jesus is talking about the born again uh, uh, experience with Nicodemus. So let's go to uh, 1 Peter 1 and 22. It says, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit in the sincere love of the brethren, brethren, another indication that you're born again. You can get along with just about everybody, okay? You got love for the brethren, okay? Uh, love for one another in fervent, pure heart. So our spirits are purified purified through the regeneration of the new birth 
but our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions, our intellect are purified as we obey the truth. What is the truth? The word of God. The word of God is the truth. Specifically when it talks about walking in love with others. So verse 23 says this, having been born again, somebody say born again. Not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. The word of God lives and will abide forever. You can't get away from the word. I don't care what this world is saying to us. The word of God, uh, it lives and it will abide forever. You need to get with the program or get left. There ain't no way around it. So the term born again literally means to be born from above. We have been born from above so that we can live above. Live above what? Live above life and life circumstances. Live above every time life tries to throw us a curveball. If you have been born again, you have, uh, you have been born uh, from above, and you are born from above to live above when life starts lifing. Whew. So just as all birth comes from seed so this birth from above or being born again comes from a seed but it's not a physical seed or or planted a seed planted by you, you know just planted in a garden or something like that the suit the the seed that produces the born again uh, experience is the seed that is born again by the word of god it's the word of God. And, and just as foolish as it is for a woman to expect to deliver a child when she has never had a seed of a man planted in her womb, it is, it is also foolish to expect for anyone to be saved without the planting of the seed of God's word into their heart. You can't be born again without the word of God. That's the seed. My God. Romans um, 17, 10 and 17 says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message and the message that is heard through the word of God. So your faith to get saved comes from you hearing the message on the word of God. It is the seed of the word that has truly been planted in your hearts to produce this experience called salvation or the born again experience. Come on, it's time to produce some evidence if you're born again. If the word of God has been planted in your heart, it's time to produce some evidence. Let's look at the word evidence. Evidence is fact. It's information indicating whether a belief or a, pos or a position is true or if the uh, belief or the position is valid. Okay? Evidence is anything that can be used to prove something. Okay? You know, like when you go into the court of law in your own trial and the evidence is presented to see whether or not you are guilty or not. Okay? I got a question. If you were arrested for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Yeah. If they put you on trial for being a Christian, will they find enough evidence to convict you? I'm talking about the word of God. The word of God is evidence. Uh, the, 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 the word evidence is derived from a Latin word, evident meaning obvious so if you proclaim to be born from above or if you are uh, you proclaim to be born again it should be pretty obvious 
We shouldn't have to go on a scavenger hunt to find out whether or not you are really born again. This stuff with these people saying they born again, but you can't find no evidence. You can't find it in their language. They don't even talk about God. They don't want to talk about God because they don't want to offend nobody. I don't care about offending nobody else. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't care about offending you because the only thing that should offend you is the word of God. When you're talking about producing evidence uh, for being a Christian, most of our minds automatically shifts to our conduct and how you act as a person and right or wrong and walk in the chalk line. Now, although some of those, those some of those things should be named um, at you know among you as being a, a Christian, that's not entirely what I'm talking about today. I'm not talking about doing, 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 doing. I'm talking about being. There's a difference in me trying to do all these things to be a Christian and me just being a Christian. Come on, the kingdom of God is not about doing, but the kingdom of God is about being. My God. So what's this evidence that we're talking about? This evidence is that I'm talking about is the word of God. Hebrews 11 and 3 says this. It says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were formed by the word of God. By faith, the worlds were formed by the word of God. I want you to keep these two words in mind. Faith, okay, in the word of God, okay? So, okay, so by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. The word of God, you got to understand this, the word of God is powerful and God has the ability to speak a thing and watch it come to pass. God has the ability to speak a thing and watch it come to pass. Genesis 1, and God said, and God said, and God said, and God said, and he said, and he said, and he said, and on down there in verse 26, and he said, and God said, and God saw everything that he had made. Well, when did he make it? He made it when he said it. God used the word of God to frame this world. So, if Jesus walked in this room this morning and said, Hello, Diverse Church, today is Tuesday. There is enough power in his word to make today Tuesday. If he walked in this room this morning and said it's Tuesday, we might as well get ready to say it's Tuesday because there's enough faith and there's enough evidence in his words to make whatever he say come to pass. Faith in God's word are one. Faith in God's word are one. I'm going to say that again because I need you to get that for where we get ready to go. Faith and God's word are one. It was when I got the revelation that God used faith in his word to create this world that I must too use God's, God's faith in his word, word to create my world. I'm going to say that again. It was after I got the revelation that God, that faith in God's word are one and that God used faith in his word, words to create this world that I then understood that I need to use the faith of God and the word of God to create my world. What am I saying? I'm saying this. You are the prophet of your own life. You are the prophet of your own life. You have the ability to speak a thing over your life and watch it come to pass. See, most Christians are not producing the evidence because they don't have no word in them. No word, no faith. No faith because you don't have any word on the inside of you. It's easy to figure out. It's easy to, to figure out why things are not happening, right? 
So faith, the faith of God comes by the, the word of God. And a lack of the word of God will produce, get this right here, a lack of the word of God will produce an unrenewed mind to the things of God. A lack of the word of God will produce an unrenewed mind to the things of God. And an unrenewed mind will produce faith failures. Yeah, I don't think y'all got that. I don't see if you got it. The lack of the word of God will, will produce an unrenewed mind. You'll be wondering why I can't remember what the Bible said. I can't remember this scripture. And somebody asked you uh, about, do you want to be healed? Well, what word are you standing on? Well, I don't know, but I know it's in the Bible somewhere. Somewhere God talking about healing, but I don't know. No, you got to get that word on the inside of you in order for it to produce. Yeah. Whoo. Let's go to Hebrews. Uh, let's go see where I want to go. Let's go to Hebrews 11 and 1. Because we got to remember that faith equals the word of God. You got to remember that faith equals the word of God. And by the word of God, we understand that the worlds were framed. So let's go to Hebrews 1. Now faith. Now faith. Faith isn't tomorrow. Faith isn't what you had last year. Well, I was in faith last year. No, the Bible says now faith. That's an indication to me that I got to stay in faith. I got to stay in faith. I got to start in faith. Faith, I got to stay in faith. And I got to finish in faith. The Bible says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now, let's connect them dots. Somebody say connect the dots. Keep that up there. We can read it like this now. Now, the word of God is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, the word of God. Now, the word of God is the substance. The word of God is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Somebody say it's time to produce some evidence. I'm going to say it one more time because I want y'all to say it just like me. It's time to produce some evidence. See, we're living, in a, we're living in a challenging time. We're living in a world that is full of uncertainty. We are living in a world where people are calling good evil, and they're calling evil good. We're, we're, actually, we're actually living the Bible out. But here's what Jesus had to say about it. Let's go to uh, John 16. He says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world, you will have tribulations, trials, and distress, and frustrations. But be of good courage. He says, be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident. Be certain. Undaunted. For I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of its power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Swoop, my God. My God, God said, be of good cheer, take courage, be confident in the word of God. So when things begin to escalate in this world and the world systems begin to fail and the world can't find the answers, there should be enough evidence among the people of God to have the answer to the situation that's going on in this world. As children of God, we are created or as children of God are new cre are the new creation of God. When things start to happen, that shouldn't surprise us. We shouldn't be shaken. Why? Because Jesus told us that these things would happen. We should not be shaken because uh, the only reason why we start shaking because we're not trusting in God. But we shouldn't be shaken because I don't know about you, but I'm not trusting in this world system. I'm trusting in the word of God. We should not be shaken because we have a witness protection program. We are a part of the witness protection program. My God. 
now is the time for the believers in Jesus Christ to stand up and to give the evidence that the fact that God is who he says he is and that the God that we serve that he is real and that there is a distinct difference between those who believe him and those that don't there's a difference in those who believe him and those who don't somebody say it's time to produce some evidence come on Jesus yes Jesus is looking for some people he can deploy into the world who will raise up the standard and demonstrate the integrity of the word of God. Somebody say, I'm on a mission. I'm on an assignment. Matthew 24 and 14 says this, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. The kingdom of God, what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the rule of God. See, people look at the kingdom of God and they think it's talking about heaven. It's not talking about heaven. It's talking about the rule of God, how God wants us to rule in the earth. Yes. The kingdom of the, of the, uh, the gospel of the kingdom, it goes beyond you just getting saved. It, it's more than you just getting saved. It's more than you showing up to church. The devil shows up at church. That's why you think we cast him out when he come up in here. It's more than that just about I'm saved and I got my fire protection and that's all I need. But well, Jesus going to need a little bit more from you, okay? Woo. The kingdom of God is the way God rules and he God rules by his word and he rules by his spirit and he rules by his anointing. The kingdom of God is talking about rulership in this world. It's talking about the children of God taking territory in the earth. Somebody look at your neighbor and say this, say, I didn't come to take sides. I came to take over. Say that again. I didn't come to take sides. I came to take over. Woo! My God. It's time to produce some evidence. Now let's look at the word uh, nations. Let's look at the word nations right there in that scripture. That word nations mean ethnic group. In other words, this gospel will be proclaimed among every ethnic group. I mean, I understand we got black people in here. We got white people in here. Uh, you, you got Asian people in the world. You got Hispanic people in the world. Uh, 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 that, that, that's your culture. I need you to keep that. But once you become born again, uh, you, have, uh, you become a part of a different ethnicity. You become a part of a different ethnicity. So you got to be aware of this new family of God that you are now in. We are soldiers in the army of the Lord. We didn't come here to compromise. We didn't come here to lay down. I didn't, I didn't get saved to still look like the world. I didn't get saved to still act like the world. When I got saved, I knew I had to show the world something different. I knew I had to show the world that it was something different that had taken place on the inside of me. My God. First Peter says this, it says, but you are a chosen generation. I'm talking about that different ethnic group that you are now a part of now that you are born again. You are a chosen generation. Come on, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Come on, his special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. A distinct separate ethnic group you become an ethnic group that's connected to him somebody say I've been born from above Woo! all right let me see where I want to go ah uh, what, what time is it? what time is it what time is it almost 20 after all right let me okay let me do this that word witness there it means martyr 
it literally means someone who's able to produce evidence. Somebody say, it's time to produce the evidence. All right. I'm about to say something real, real radical. I need you to strap in, Frank laughing. I need y'all to strap in. Y'all in? Y'all in? All right, now. See, you got to understand this, that the word of God is not going to come to pass in your life because God said so. I know that's radical. I know that's radical. We walk around and we say things like, well, God said it and that settles it. The word of God is not going to come to pass in your life because God says so. The word of God is going to come to pass in your life when you say what God has said and you say it in the earth. You might say, well, Pastor, how, how, how can you stand up there and say that? Because I can read. Because I can read. DJ, put the next scripture up there. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. God said, God said it and it's settled in heaven. His word is settled in heaven, not earth. The only way for the word of God to be settled in earth is that somebody on earth has to say what God has said in heaven. We got to be saying something. You got to be saying something. It's time to produce the evidence. Psalms 107 and 2 says this. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What are we saying? We saying what God said in heaven because thy word, O oh Lord, has been settled in heaven. And we're going to settle it in the earth when we say what God said in heaven on earth. You got to open up your mouth and say something. I'm so tired of Christians walking around scared to open up their mouth and say something about when evil is a present and among us. We cowering down about stuff that we don't need to cower down about. That's a part of your salvation is to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom of God. We can't be no weak, sissified Christians and try to produce evidence. I ain't never seen no weak, sissified person produce nothing. I told you I didn't come to take sides. I came to take over. My God. Jesus paid a horrible price. For us to be kings in the earth, it's time to produce some evidence. Who you with? Who you with? Come on, who you with? Woo! Jesus said it this way. He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. His word is settled when he gets his sons in the earth and they say whatever heaven is saying. And whenever we say what heaven is saying, heaven will back us up. You ain't never got to worry about if God's going to hear my prayer. If God, I wonder if the Lord is hearing me today. When you say uh, what heaven is saying, heaven will back your words. My God. My God. My God. Woo. The word of God is settled. Will be settled in the earth when he gets some sons in the earth to say what heaven is saying. Now when I say sons, I'm not talking about gender, but I'm talking about those who have been made one with God. The book of Galatians says this. The book of Galatians says there is neither male nor female, but we are all one with God. That's the sons that I'm talking about. Those are the ones that I'm talking about that have the nature and the character of God. Romans 8 and 19 says this. It says, for the earnest expectation for the creation waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Creation is not waiting 
for the us for the sons of God to show up because we are already here. Somebody say we in the house. But what the creation is waiting for is, is for what the sons of God are supposed to produce. Woo! It's waiting for what we are supposed to produce. It's waiting for what is supposed to come out of us as children of God. What's supposed to come out of us as the children of God? But the fruit uh, of the Spirit is love. It's joy. It's peace. It's long-suffering. It's gentleness. It's goodness. It's faith. It's meekness. It's temperance. Those are the things that ought to be coming out of the sons of God. If you are a son of God, you ought to be showing love and joy. My God. Some peace some long suffering towards people getting mad at people and staying mad at people forever that's not the fruit of the spirit that's not what's supposed to be coming out of you as a son of God my God help me Jesus it's waiting for us to say something it's time to produce some evidence we're living in a, in a day and a time where the world is trying to shut the mouth of the people of God. But I came to announce today that God has not given me or you the spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind. And I'm not afraid to lift my voice. I'm not afraid to call sin when it's sin. I'm not afraid to call a devil a devil. Why? Because I'm a part of the witness protection program. What do I mean by the witness protection program? Psalms 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The, the, he, he, here's the other way you can read it. He who dwells in the secret place of El Elyon. El Elyon uh, is the Most High God. Shall, a, shall abide under the shadow of the uh, of El Shaddai. El Shaddai is the mighty God. See, when you get a revelation that he's the most high God, don't matter what your situation is, don't matter what your circumstances is, doesn't matter what obstacle that comes in stand in your way, the most high God has got whatever you need. Come on, whatever you need, he's got it. Whatever protection I need, I got it. Whatever deliverance I need, I got it. Whatever healing I need, I got it. Come on, somebody. Whatever safety I need, I got it. Ho, oh, when I need a, ma a way made out of no way, I got it. Come on. Whatever provision I need, I got it. Whoo, whatever recovery I need, I got it. Because I serve El El Yon, the most high God. Somebody shout, I got it. God. Psalms 91 and 2. Let's just go ahead. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. I will say of the Lord in order to produce the evidence you got to be saying something. You got to be saying something because your protection is voice activated. He said, I will say of the Lord, you got to say something because your protection is voice activated. You got to open up your mouth and say something. Come on, your healing is voice activated. Your deliverance is voice activated. Your recovery is voice activated. Come on, your prosperity is voice activated. You can't keep walking around talking about you broke. I ain't got two pennies to rub together. If it ain't one thing, it's another. And you think you're going to prosper? Come on. Those things are voice activated also. You want to keep speaking poverty and loss and lack in your life? Don't get mad when the evidence that you speak and show up. It's time to produce some evidence. Psalms 103 says this. It says, so bless the Lord, all you angels uh, uh, of power. For you are his mighty heroes who listen it intensely to the voice of his word to do it. Bless the Lord, all he messengers of power. 
For you are his mighty heroes who listen intently to the voice of the word to produce it. The angels of God are hearkening to the voice of the word. What are you saying? You got to open up your mouth and say something. Verse uh, 3 in Psalms 91, it says, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the uh, perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. His truth, what is the truth? The truth is the word of God. So the truth of his word shall be your shield and your buckler. Verse number five says, you shall not be afraid for the terror by night. Don't be scared. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be scared nor for the arrows that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. It does not matter what weapon the enemy has formed against you. You need to make God your refuge. You need to know that God is your protector. Come on, we need to produce the evidence of the word of God. Verse 7 says this, a thousand, a thousand, shall fall at your side. Didn't say nothing about it touching you. <laughs> Didn't say nothing about it getting to you. It's God said that. God said that. I'm going to let it fall right beside you. He said, I'm going to let you see. I'm going to let you see what I'm doing to the enemy. It's going to drop right there beside you. My God. A thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only... Somebody say only with your eyes shall you see and look and see the reward of the wicked. When they keep on messing with you, God said, I'm going to let you see what's going to happen to the people that just keep on messing with you, with you. They won't leave you alone. You're trying to be peacemakers. You're trying to get along with them. You're trying to do everything that's right. And they just keep on and they just keep on and they just keep on. God said, that's all right. I'm going to let you see the reward they're going to get for that. Woo, he prepares the table in the presence of mine enemies. My God. They keep messing with you over there in, uh, in the New Testament. God said, I'm going to trouble your trouble. Let them keep on messing with you. God said, I'm going to trouble the one that's troubling you. I'm going to trouble your trouble. A thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh you. Help me, Jesus. Only with your eyes for you shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. place. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, your hiding place, your deliverer, the one that you run to, the one that you feel safe with. The one that you call on. The one who you know have delivered you. The one who made a way out of no way. Because you have made the Lord your refuge. Even the most high your dwelling place. No evil. Somebody say no evil. Because you've done all those things. No evil shall befall you. Neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. For the Lord has given his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample under feet. Come on, this is the evidence that God is talking about. It's time to produce the evidence. You need to be trampling over your enemy. You don't need to be running and hiding from your enemy. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. There's a promise in the word of God. Because you have set your love upon God, he said, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. You can't know the name of God without knowing the word of God. You can't know the name of God without knowing the word of God. 
You can't know the name of God without knowing the word of God. You got to get up the word on the inside of you more than Sunday morning and Wednesday night Bible study. It's time to produce the evidence. Verse 15 said, he shall call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and I will honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. If you are born again, it's time to produce the evidence. Come on, you can do better than that. Stand on your feet. Give the devil a headache. Come on, clap your hands. All you people, shout! Under God with the voice of triumph. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violence taken by force. Woo! Yes, Lord. Did you enjoy the word of God? I said, did you enjoy the word of God? Is there any evidence in you, in me? I choose to speak the word. Of Almighty God. Come on, one more time. Give Jesus a hand praise. Woo! He is worthy to be praised. My God, my God, my God. Mm. Evidence. It's so important to get the Word of God on the inside of you and let that evidence flow out in the love of God. Praise God. Praise God. Father, we just thank you for this day, for this is truly a day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in this day, God. Father, as we get ready to leave this place, God, we thank you, God, that we'll never leave your presence because you are always with us. You'll never leave us nor forsake us. Father, we thank you that we have angels on assignment, angels encamped around us because they hearken into the voice of the word. And we declare your word that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Father, we thank you right now as we leave this place. No accidents, no breakdowns, no tickets. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. And the redeemed of the Lord say so by saying hallelujah. Praise God. We love you at Diverse Church. Can't wait to see you next Sunday and Wednesday night Bible study. God bless you. We love you.